Isaiah chapter 14, please. There is one being who wanted to do something. There is one being who wanted to keep going someplace else, and that's up, up, and up. Satan has an infatuation with going higher and higher and higher. He wanted to be higher than God. That's why what you're going to notice, what's very interesting in, a, in our world, how he tries to make structures, systems, uh, the ranking of his elite, so to speak, all have a tired structure up system. So we're going to start off with Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will, what? Ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne, what? Above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of where? The north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. So Satan, he has an infatuation to go up. Why? Because there is one being who is up, and that is God Almighty. Amen. God is always the top. But Satan, what he wants to do is take over the throne of God and be higher than him. Why is that? Because originally, I don't know if you knew this, Satan, before he fell, what was he? He was a cherubim. So there were five cherubim surrounding the throne of God. Uh, you'll find that in Revelation chapter 4. Compare that with Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel chapter 1, and Ezekiel chapter 10. But we won't turn there for time's sake. Those are found in my other videos. So there are five cherubims in total. You got four that already surrounded the throne. So where are you going to put the fifth cherub, which is Lucifer? Where are you going to put him? So turn to Ezekiel chapter 28, please. Ezekiel chapter 28. The fifth cherub, his original position was on top because he was the covering. He was the covering. Whereas the other four cherubims, they surrounded him, and he was the cherry on top, so to speak. He was the covering on top. We're going to turn to Ezekiel chapter 28. You think that there are only four cherubims when you read Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, chapter 10, and Revelation 4? No, there's another cherubim that you overlooked. Ezekiel chapter 28. Look at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. Now, anointed, what does anoint mean? That's something that you pour on top of the head. You anoint literally the top of the head. But look, thou art the anointed cherub that what? Cover it. See, he's the covering. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the where? Mountain of God. See, he was on top. But what happened? Verse 15, thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. So we got to understand that Lucifer, he always wanted to be on top. Why? Because he, that was his original position by God. But what happened? You read Ezekiel chapter 28. He sinned against God. So because he sinned against God, he can't go up. He has to go down. Go back to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14. What you're going to notice, which is very interesting, is that whenever Satan tries to go up, the Lord makes the opposite. This is, now there's a devotional application to this too. You ready for this? That's why whenever you have pride in your heart, God has to. It is a law. He has to humble you. Why? Because Satan's issue was he's the king of all the children of pride. And so God had to humble him by putting him down. Now, let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. What's the first part? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Why is he fallen from heaven? Because, verse 13, for thou hast, see, there's a reason why. There's a reason why, God says. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will go up, ascend into heaven. I will go up, exalt my throne above the stars of God. See that? He always wants to go up. Now, isn't it very interesting what you notice right here, that when he goes down, the Lord says this, verse 12, How art thou cut down to the ground, 
which does sweeten the nations. He wants him down at the ground, but even below the ground. Because look at verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to where? Hell to the sides of the pit. So you got to understand this. When Lucifer is going down, 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 he's not just going down to the ground here. He's going below ground zero. He's going to hell. That's where he's going. That, that is a big disgrace to Satan because he's so much filled with pride, he wants to go up, that God has to put him at the lowest. Now think about this. That's why it's very interesting that when you talk about aliens, UFO sightings, and etc., you'll see, they all fly around in outer space. But Dr. Oatman once taught this. He believes that those uh, creatures do not come from above. Well, where are they coming from? They come from below. So a lot of the alien sightings that you see, you got to realize this. Honestly, they're not the ones who are flying in outer space. They're not the ones who are above. Look at Isaiah 14. Read that again. What does Satan want to do? Isaiah 14, uh, read verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the where? Stars of God. He wants you to think that he comes from outer space, from the stars, because that's how high he is. But no, they're actually coming down from below. They're coming down from below. Now, these beings, you got to understand this. They are above you. They are traveling above you everywhere. They're going everywhere. Because the Bible says that Ephesians chapter 2, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Power of the air. Like there's some kind of energy or power flying around through the air, like a UFO, some kind of power. So you got to understand this. They are traveling through outer space, but that's not where they're from. They're from the ground. And then they come up out of the ground, and what do they do? They roam around outer space, and not only that, they roam around the earth, because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, if I recall, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Job chapter 1, Satan says, uh, going to and fro the earth, walking up and down in it. Why is that? He, see, that's where he's from. That's why. He's from down. That's where he's originally from. But he goes all the way around above because he likes to be on top. He wants to show that he is on top. That no one is at the bottom. Now, what you're going to notice right here is that <clears throat> Satan, isn't it very interesting that he says that he wants to be above the stars of God? Now, think about this, folks. There is something at the top of outer space. What is that if you read your Bible? It's the sea of glass, right? So within this sea of glass right here, Satan, can he go above it? Absolutely not. He can't go to heaven where God is. So that's why you see so much demonic activity above, throughout outer space, the universe. Because Satan, he has an infatuation with that. He has a desire to be over there. Because that's the highest he's going to get. He wants to go higher than that, but nope, God's like, nope, boom, not allowed. So that's as high as Satan can go. So you'll see right here that God, he just disgraces the devil by putting him below the ground of the earth when he wanted to go above the ground of God. Isn't that kind of funny how the Lord worked things out for the devil? He does things for a reason. Okay, that's why it makes sense when you <clears throat> look at certain mythologies or certain things like the Bermuda Triangle, Atlantis, etc., you'll find out that there are strange occurrences at the sea. Why is that? Because below the sea is hell. <clears throat> if you read Jonah chapter 2, it's evident where it shows that. Jonah, he goes so much down below the sea and the earth that he later goes to a burning hell below it. So hell is beneath the bottom of the sea. The deepest part within our earth is the ocean, the ocean. Uh, the trench over there, correct me if I'm wrong, but the trench over there is like the deepest part of, of the whole world. So you'll notice right here that the closest area that would reach hell is the bottom of the sea, so to speak. 
So that's why you see these strange occurrences where there are ships disappearing, planes disappearing, uh, where s mythologies about these creatures who have an uh, underwater city coming out. If you read these strange things from the, was it the Talmud? Yeah, it's either a Talmud or a rabbinical writing. And you look at other strange religious writings, they give all these strange things about some kind of paradise below the earth where, where they meet all these strange looking weird alien creatures. Where are they getting, who's their daddy? I wonder who's teaching them all that. So that's the empire, that's the domain of Satan. Now there's some teaching uh, concerning about a hollow earth where there's basically an alien civilization underneath that. Now me, I don't, uh, like I t uh, tell people online, I do not hold to those doctrines. But there are some things that you'd be surprised can be true about them, that you'll see glimpses of it in the Bible. Now, aside from all these things, you got to understand this is how God works with Satan, but Satan, he always has an infatuation with going up. And that's the reason why what you're going to notice, if you look throughout our world today, what is he trying to do? He's trying to keep going up, 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 and up. That's why you'll see tall buildings. Why is it that a lot of corruption can be found in really tall buildings? And I mean spiritual de demonic activity. That's why there's a lot of immoral activities, a lot of sins going on. Um, come on, let's be honest. I don't care if you're a Republican or not, but capitalism is not perfect. A lot of it is just inhu inhumane and immoral, too. You're going to find that out. Why is it a lot of dark elites today... They go to like really powerful, tall buildings. Why do people want to live on top? See, that's the thing. They all have a spirit that Satan shares in common with them. They want to go up. They want to go up. So that's why a lot of spiritual sins, what you're going to find out, the closest thing that you can get to the devil, believe it or not, is in tall buildings. Believe it or not. It's in a city. If you doubt me, look at the... Uh, look at the morals of the civilization in a country area and a city life. Okay? But anyway, aside from that fact, uh, we also see how if you go to certain government buildings, it's kind of surprising, even here in our city, that uh, the city hall, they'll have this obelisk. Yeah. Obelisk, is, isn't it strange how they're always pointing up, up, up? Because that's what Satan wants. Hey, it's not just government buildings. It's also, you're going to find out, which is very strange, this is not just a, Masa uh, a Mason thing. It's not only a Mason thing. You're going to find that even at Israel. So that's why there's a, lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of elites or Jewish bankers. Uh, you can take your pick, Rothschilds or something like that, where they would have obelisk in their buildings as well, which is very interesting. Not only that, uh, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, has an obelisk over there. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but there is some documentation where they actually dragged the obelisk from Egypt and took it all the way to Rome. What? So I don't know if that's true or not, though. But the guy who taught that is actually not just some random onliner. He's a guy who made a best-selling book. But this book, he actually retracted from him, and he became a Catholic. Mm, got paid off, yeah. But anyways, so Dr. Upman actually recommended that book really strongly. But now it's like pretty much, it's gone. I still have it actually, <laughs> which is really neat. If you read it, you'll really like it. The guy, he was selling it like hotcakes because he was showing so many pictures per page and that attracted people's attention. And not only that, he documented everything per page. So it was so readable. It was so readable, yeah. So, uh... Anyway, I'll just say the name. Ralph Woodrow, okay? Ralph yeah. Woodrow, okay? Yeah, you won't find it anymore. You won't find it anymore, sorry. Yeah, he became, he became Catholic sympathizer now. But uh, I wonder who got to him. Anyways, aside from that, you see that a lot of uh, conspiracies or dark elites today, the obelisk, it encompasses not just masonry. It also encompasses where you see it within uh, Jewish rich buildings. It also encompasses the Vatican, the Catholic Church. It covers uh, government buildings, city halls. And not only that, within the conspiracy realm or the back of your dollar bill, it's a pyramid, right? It's a pyramid. But notice there's someone on top of the pyramid. And this is their all-seeing eye. He's a bright illuminator. Who's the shining one? Lucifer. 
That's what his name means, actually. He's like a shining one. That's what Lucifer means. That's where Illuminati, the infamous term, came from. Why? Illuminating. Showing the light. That's why you read uh, Mason O's. The goal is so that you can step into the light. Rosicrucians, all kinds of weird esoteric groups, theosophists, they talk about getting better enlightenment, closer to the light. That's their goal, finding truth, finding truth. My friend, it was right in your hand all that time and you can get it from a dollar store. <laughs> You don't, have to take, you don't have to go through a weird system, take blood oaths, sell your soul to the devil to get the light, the truth. You don't have to do that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. But within the Tyre system, it is known within conspiracies that there's a pyramid system. And they would put Rothschilds as one of the people on top. But the mother of it all, what you're going to notice from history, is the Jesuits. They're the mother of it all. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not as if one group controls everybody. That's not how it all goes. It's everybody being like their daddy, the devil. They all want to go on top. That's the reason why if you study conspiracies, you'll find conflicts, contradictions. Not only, not only them teaming up together, but also fighting each other. Contradictions. Why? Because it's very simple. All of them are their own god. They all want to go up. So they'll team up if they have to. They'll betray each other if they have to. This goes all the way back to the time of Jesus. The Herodians and the Pharisees did not get along, but because Jesus was there, that's when they teamed up. Everyone wants power. Everyone wants power. So who's the one on top, though? It's not the Catholic Church. It's not the Jews. It's not the Masons. It is Satan. He's the guy on top. That's why... The Bible perfectly says that the book of Job, I think it's chapter 41, the last verse, he is a king over all the children of pride. Everyone has a pride issue going on. That's why what we strongly preach against in this church that you'll notice is pride. We really slam that. I, could, I see pride within a lot of different sins. That is a, root, a key root within everything. You also notice why Satan, he always puts satellites on top, right? So he'll put these little satellites on top. Why? Technology to control everybody below. That's kind of like God, right? God is on top of everybody, and the world is his footstool. And that's what Satan wants, to give that kind of superiority. You know who's the one in charge. But what's going to happen at Revelation chapter 12? We don't have time to turn to all these verses because i got to switch to a different teaching. But at Revelation chapter 12, Satan, what does he do? His highest domain is right here in outer space. But then what does he do? He loses the battle against Michael, the archangel, and the angels, and they cast him down to the earth. So he goes down. And then guess what? After that, he goes below the earth now. He burns in hell for all eternity.